up, and we are looking at your full screen slides. Perfect. Fantastic. So um, it's, uh, it's definitely hard to come last. I've heard uh, most of the presentations so far today, and, and they, there's definitely been so much to think about, and uh, I'm happy to, to, to try and, and uh, um, there's so much to reflect on uh, about how to go off and improve um, the sustainability of, of this medium. Um, I want to try and, and touch on, on a few things. Uh, Open Concept is, is also a, a benefit corporation, um, much like um, Man Overboard and Muddy Bites, um, who were presenting before me. Um, I think that the uh, one of the neat things about organizations like benefit corporations is that that it's it's like uh, uh, embers of a fire. If you if you gather them together, you can go off and start a real bonfire. But if you're if you're all separated, then you're going to go off and, and and wither out and and not necessarily um, not necessarily Really be able to sustain a, a uh, the warmth and the, and the growth of, of, of the the idea and, and, and the the inspiration. So I'm very inspired that uh, that Tim was able to go off and, and uh, both get me involved in in looking at at sustainable uh, design and what what we can do to go off and improve our own practices uh, and also find ways to contribute back to that. Um, so uh, I want to talk a little bit about about the software development process because a lot of people don't understand how software is developed. I want to to look at uh, culture change and how culture change happens in organizations uh, or in, in in software communities. Um, I want to look at at ways of performing uh, at performance improvements and things that that we've done to to address that, and also ways to try and and, and build better solutions moving forward and trying to change that behavior of of, of individuals. Um, so the first thing to remember is that when we're talking about the web, we're ultimately talking about software libraries. There's there are so many different libraries that are being used to generate um, the pages that we see and use on a regular basis. Most of us are not aware of the licenses that software the, of the software that we're using. Sometimes we we may go off and, and to, you know be aware of about whether or not it's a um, it's software you have to pay for or not. Um, or whether or not it's it's uh, um, and there's there's a lot of, of, of different kinds of open source libraries, but um, if you're whether you're looking at at Linux or Apache or Nginx or um, even even if you're looking at at uh, uh, yeah, jQuery or um, the React or uh, there's 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 just you know PHP there's there's so many languages and so many uh, components of the web which are made up of of open source software even right up to the the browser level um, still one of the more popular uh, web browsers is Firefox which is also released under the GPL um, there's there is, in, in terms of, of the, the web, though, a real um, uh, winning combination of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that, that has really been really quite useful to go off and to, to create this, this um, the, the, the web as we know it. But, um, and, and a lot of the, 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 the tools that, are, that we're using to build these, these um, to build, build websites with are, are, are open source, but, but also the servers are, the networks are, the protocols are. There's a whole ecosystem that we generally don't think about. And, and one of the things that, that has been um, really useful to think about um, in the open source world is that we're all standing on the shoulders of giants. There are so many ideas out there and so many um, great inspirations that that people are contributing and able to expand on other people's ideas and because there's this this open space for collaboration and exchange there's there's innovation happening all the time in the, in the internet um, but often it is it's a matter of combining various different ideas together in a way that 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 provides a um, provides something um, pr provides something that seems new and different and, and some some new angle on, on, a, on an existing problem um, so one of the ways that that uh, I guess our, our deepest experience with that is that uh, with with open with open source in general is that um, I'm the Drupal 8 core accessibility maintainer. So um, we started to look at at accessibility at about 2008 when when um, uh, Drupal 8, 7 was just getting started, and we we looked at ways to go off and, and to enhance that accessibility because we saw that there was a number of of ways that we could expand into government or education or uh, the nonprofit community and we we started to to work to look at at the software with the Drupal community and we weren't strangers to the Drupal community but we hadn't been all that invested where we hadn't been um, um, as deeply invested in it as, as we are now for sure 
Um, and we, we looked at ways to go off and to, to, to work with the community to build solutions. So um, the, the way that we approached at, at improving um, the accessibility of Drupal for people who are blind, who are, um, have, have visual impairments, have mo motor, motor challenges, who have uh, uh, challenges with, with cognitive disabilities or learning disabilities, we, we tried to go off and, and to to look at issues and engage with an issue queue, which is, is where a lot of, of software communities go and develop their, their ideas and, and engage, uh, engage on, on ideas with them. Um, and we made a lot of improvements between 2008 and 2011. Um, and we learned a lot through that process. Uh, I didn't know all that much about web accessibility back in 2008. And in 2011, I had 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 an opportunity to go off and talk to a lot of people in the Drupal community, in the design community, in the um, in the accessibility community, and I, I was able to to learn a lot and contribute a lot back to the the uh, the open source community uh, around Drupal to make that happen. Um, in 2011, we were able to release Drupal 7, uh, which was great, and, and that was the most accessible content management system um, available at that time. Um, but we didn't catch everything. It's it's uh, uh, there's 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 so many issues where um, security, uh, accessibility, and and performance are all things that you can you can spend an infinite amount of time working on them, and you're never actually going to go off and have something that's completely performant or completely accessible or completely secure. Um, but we've we've made improvements between Drupal 7 and Drupal 8, which have, have really helped move this along. Um, at this point in 2015, there's a, more than a million websites that are using Drupal 7 or Drupal 8, and it's, it's really quite a a neat thing to have contributed to to instilling web accessibility into this platform by default, um, and uh, the the uh, just to have that large an impact on the internet. It's, it's roughly a three to four percent of the internet, um, and and certainly isn't stuff that I did on my my own. But I was able to spearhead an initiative that that was able to um, affect the internet. And I think this is really what what we need to start looking at when we're looking at sustainability is, is ways of, of, of scaling things up. Um, by um, we need to be able to look at getting involved in open source communities if we want to go off and see these these um, these issues um, really have an environmental impact. We shouldn't just be looking at how we can speed up the performance of the widgets on our site. We should be looking upstream as much as possible and try and find out where the barriers are that are stopping, uh, that are slowing down your site, and that if you can fix them at the source, if you can go off and, and look at where, uh, where the bottlenecks are in your performance and address those, then you'll, you're going to be much further ahead um, because generally that's, that's how software works. If you make an, an enhancement to a, a JavaScript library you're using for your website and you don't contribute that information back to the, 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 uh, the core library, then, um, then every time there's an upgrade that you need to apply to that, that function, you're going to need to have to go back, identify where the improvement was, apply the patch, verify that it works, and and go through the whole pro, uh, process of, of making sure that your your whole website is able to to work with that that uh, that customization within it. If you take a little bit of extra time and look at contributing that that improvement back to the community, um, you're going to to eventually have something um, that that hopefully not only benefits your own site but benefits everyone's site, and it even ends up costing you less time because you're not going to have to reapply that patch every time you try to um, provide an upgrade to the software. <clears throat> so um, engaging with others and helping them try and and understand what your um, where your concerns are and 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 try and and provide that that sense of of uh, how um, how you can go off and advance the product and how this will benefit everyone. I think that that everyone who's who's involved with with software in general would would like their websites to be faster. Everyone would like to go off and say that they're um, if if somebody's able to draw attention to a, a widget that's that's um, that's causing uh, a demonstrated uh, CO2 disadvantage or, or additional CO2 cost that, that can be be caused um, from from uh, um, from generating or or uh, displaying the website. I think that that 
most open source developers would be quite happy to go off and eliminate that and uh, uh, and and see that that these are um, issues that they can um, can clean up and and uh, uh, and proceed with. Um, it always does help though to go off and, and see that you're working with with standards. And um, I was was. Uh, um, Looking at uh, in terms of getting the adoption of web accessibility uh, in the Drupal community, one of the things that that I found was was quite useful was was referring to the World Wide Web Consortium and uh, or the W3C, and in leveraging their documents and providing a an example where their guidelines were were used and and, and determined, that was really quite useful. It was also useful to know that there were uh, there's legislation that that uh, that many uh, organizations uh, were were subject to that that we could point to and say, hey, if 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 you're there's organizations that are going to need to have this in place in order to go off and to to implement our solution. So let's go off and find ways to to meet these guidelines so that it's easier for us to go off and to to sell our products. Um, and I was happy to find out just recently that there is a, a W3C sustainable web design community group that was was uh, was set up. And as I understand it, this isn't at this point set up as a, um, a, guy, a, a community group to, to help uh, Create a uh, a guideline, but I think it does really point to that 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 need to um, to have something that you can refer to people to as a as a standard, so that they can evaluate and and um, identify where um, in, in an abs in a in a um, in as clear and transparent a way as possible um, that that this is a best practice that that an industry best practice that should be adopted more generally. Um, in terms of, of uh, getting adoption with with uh, um, Drupal eight, I found that there was there was a, uh, um, a Drupal seven and eight. Um, it was really important to try and find allies, and I think this is true with with any movement. Um, is if you're if you're looking for uh, looking to go off and, and to to bring bring people on and help you with your agenda, it's useful to go off and and both help them with theirs, and find ways that there's there's overlapping interests. So. Um, for accessibility, uh, the the usability folks were certainly a, a, a big part of it, and, and not that there aren't conflicts between accessibility and usability on, on some issues, but we spent a lot of time over many years trying to understand our different positions, and, and uh, we're now in a position where where the the usability people uh, within Drupal at core and the accessibility people have have a, a great deal of respect for each other. Um, for the the uh, um, for, for looking at at uh, uh, sustainability, um, I think that that performance are uh, the performance advocates are probably the um, the largest uh, advocates for for supporting um, the improvements in 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 any of these libraries. Um, I know within Drupal, uh, performance is one of the uh, accessibility gates, or sorry, one of the the, the the core gates rather that that was set up by Dries after uh, 2011, and these were, were set up to, to try and make sure that that the there's a, there's an accessibility um, gate, there's a, um, a is there a, a performance gate, there's a I forgot the other two gates. Anyways, there's four gates that are set up and structured to to help um, ensure that that the product that is released is as um, as robust as possible, and and performance is certainly a really critical one. And there's a lot of people looking at ways to go off and to improve the performance with every release to see that the the um, um, the application is able to to uh, uh, serve pages faster um, and and more effectively. And 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 so trying to 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 work with those with those communities of people um, is really quite useful. There's also the the search engine optimization experts in terms of trying to to see that the the information that you're presenting is is as um, as structured for for meaningful semantic content that the the search engines can draw on and build on. Um, if you can if you can work with them to try and provide um, a, a uh, um, an interface that that allows uh, search engines to direct people right to the page with the information on that that can be quite useful. Um, the usability and accessibility professionals are also um, 
useful there as well because it's it's again trying to make sure that once people get to the get to your page that they're able to find the information um, no matter what instance no, no matter how they're they're using the site whether they're on um, uh, a tablet in the, while they're sitting on the on a on a beach or whether they're uh, they have a disability and uh, maybe they're using a screen reader to access the information if you expose the information as much as possible you'll really be able to um, uh, help people get to it in, in the context that they, they need to, that they're, they're navigating the web and not have to either frustrate them or have them come back at another time or ask somebody else for help to find the information. Um, there's also a lot of, of people either writing documentation or doing education around uh, around that, that can be quite helpful. Just, just if you can um, make it easier to explain to, uh, to new people why this information matters. Um, there's a great African proverb that I, 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 I do really like that uh, um, is, 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 if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go hard, go together. Um, it does really help embrace a lot of those ideas of, of open source communities. And, and the more we can struggle together on some of these, these difficult issues, that we'll be able to find solutions that we're able to um, support us o over time. Um, and also like to say that, that uh, a lot of open source uh, content management systems have been mentioned in, in the uh, um, in over the last uh, over the last day, but the there certainly is, is collaboration between them as well. There's there's competition, but also collaboration. And, and uh, happy to say that there's there's been um, um, some back and forth between the, the Drupal and WordPress communities on, on ways that that we can uh, can can collaborate more effectively together. And there's there's things that that they're doing which are great that we can learn from. And there's things that they're um, learning from Drupal as well. And it's it's a it's a a nice way to go off and to to compete and and uh, and also collaborate together with with tools that that are designed to be um, where, where the license is really clearly set up for you to to take those best ideas and to to use them in the context that you see fit and and to help your projects go ahead as needed so that you can use modify and redistribute the information. Um, wanted to go off and and, and look at a couple uh, things that 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 have been been. Um, tried in, in Drupal and that are, are trying to be, be built into core more often. Um, one of them is just just reducing the size of, of packages. There's there's so many times where there's extra space. I guess spaces aren't as much of an issue, but there's there's extra um, information within the the uh, CSS and, and uh, JavaScript files in particular that can really really be compressed and 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 presented in a way that that is as is as, as light as possible. And and, and doing uh, browser side uh, sorry server side compression um, of the files that are being served. Uh, Across the internet also helps to um, to to reduce the the page load times. It does also go off and increase the the, the computational times because you need to or the computational power because every time you compress something you need to also ex, you know expand it on the other side. So, um, but in whole I think that the the process of uh, it's efficient enough to go off and compress and decompress information that it's it's worth worth it from an environmental perspective to 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 do that. Um, Moving to to modern image formats is, is also useful. So there's a uh, a format called SVG or for for scalar vector graphics that that really helps provide way more professional looking images for your mobile devices um, as well as for your desktop and. It, Often they can be constructed with with uh, a much uh, lower resolution, uh, or sorry, much a much smaller uh, uh, footprint in terms of the the file size. Um, and you can also provide within SVGs a lot of of uh, uh, additional um, semantic information as well. You can you can embed titles right into there. You can embed a lot of other information um, right into the SVG file. Um, now. Of course, one of the things to, to look at is, is that as, as, as great as SVGs are for, for a lot of solutions, um, I think that there are some people that have, have managed to go off and, and uh, uh, potentially embed uh, viruses within SVG files because of that, that complexity. So it's, it's certainly something that, that uh, um, you need to, to look at how, um, how you are, you are, uh, you're using your, your technology and, and to what information you extend, um, extend that to, to non-trusted users. Um, 
there's there's been a lot of efforts to make it easier to use the content delivery networks, and um, one of the things that that uh, that's that's part of of uh, well, there's a lot of modules to to do this in in both WordPress and Drupal is is, is just to to use those um, those those content delivery net networks effectively and and uh, to make it easier to just you know pull on existing libraries, and it's it's so useful when you're using something like jQuery, which is being leveraged by by so much of the internet, to be able to to pull that version of uh, off of a uh, off of a central site, and assume that at some point later on in the day that 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 browser will will be able to go off and, and to to leverage that that same library off of somebody else's uh, website, and 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 again if you're if you're keeping your your um, your website uh, up to date for security reasons, and you're updating uh, the libraries in order to go off and make sure that you're you're able to go off and to have a a secure and performant and and accessible website. It's it's um you're you're going to be using a lot of the same packages that uh, that people are um, that other people are going to be using. Um, CSS sprites are also quite useful to try and, and reduce the the uh, the the size of, of the images that, that people are, are loading. Um, there's also a, a new initiative. There's there's uh, actually two new initiatives. One is is Facebook's Big Pipe, which is uh, is really structured to um, to only send the pieces of, of, of content that change on a page. And I think that the uh, Drupal 8.1 should come with Facebook's big pipe built in. Um, and I think that the performance advantages of, of bundling a website with big pipe could be um, um, really quite quite impressive. Um, and, and having that, that, um, that means to not, not sort of request whole pages, but to request fragments of web pages and, and to uh, to pass that back and forth. Um, the other uh, big change that's coming down the, the pipe is, is HTTP slash 2 or HTTP 2. And this is, is a... Um, one of the barriers to performance previously was that that you you wanted to compress um, images, uh, or you want to be able to uh, to send as few files as possible over the net because every file was was a potential um, barrier. But with with HTTP two. Um, the the structuring the ordering of, of the, the 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 file loads fundamentally changes and that it's um, it, it's it makes a lot more sense to just send the files that are being used on that page at that particular time rather than trying to to bundle them into a um, a massive uh, CSS or JavaScript file that that contains all the information that you use on, on your website um, again this is something that that is is really an emerging uh, technology and and uh, and we'll see um, um, how that goes, but but when you're working with a large open source community um, like either WordPress or or Drupal, you have the advantage of of knowing that there's people out there that are looking at this and who are experimenting with these 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 challenges and have ways to go off and to contribute those back to uh, uh, to, to the community for other people to use and, and take advantage of. Um, Perform uh, performance is also a tricky issue in terms of, of um, you know, there are sometimes you'll load a web page and it takes five seconds to load, and sometimes it, it'll load in under a second. And and trying to go off and, and manage that that um, that functional behavior and, and the performance is, is a is a it's a real challenge. And and I, that if we can, um, there's a number of places where where conditions will change on on uh, on the load time, whether how busy the server is or whether it's it's the uh, the bandwidth that's available for you at this particular time, or uh, what other processes you're running on your desktop. There's a lot of issues that can affect how how uh, quickly a page loads, and um, uh, sometimes you, in terms of, of evaluating this, you need to to be able to uh, to aggregate and get the averages of hundreds of different tests in order to go off and to determine whether the solution that you're uh, you're coming up with for your your web pages is uh, is really faster or not, uh, because because it does vary uh, depending on the uh, the number of other queries that are being expressed to the database, to the um, the uh, uh, how busy the the internet is at that particular time, what route the packets go from one server to the next. So having a a, uh, a way to to evaluate um, and identify those 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 bottlenecks is. is 
it's really quite important, but it's also quite time consuming and, and uh, you can spend a lot of, uh, you can pass a lot of packets back, back and forth trying to go off and to determine your, your, uh, um, uh, what your, your metrics really are. Um, there's a lot of tools to help you uh, determine that though. There's, there's, there's um, uh, a lot of open source tools like Apache Bench, uh, Gatling, JMeter. Uh, there's a whole bunch of services as well that you can use to, um, to plug in and, and, and evaluate um, how well a uh, how well your website works under load and, and verify that it's it's not just a matter of, of um, your your website uh, it's not just you ne necessarily navigating your website but how does your website perform when there's ten different people loading the same content at the same time or different content and accessing uh, slightly different routines in, in a various in, in different ways how does uh, I think that there's there's a lot of, uh, of variables that that can be uh, looked at and 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 certainly there there's um, improvements to be made but often it's a it's a challenge to go off and to identify where where to go off and to make make the improvements and 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 how to to see that your your website is is uh, is going to be um, faster overall and and uh, and not just making you know um, small changes that will be uh, that aren't necessarily going to provide a, a large uh, impact to the the uh, the performance of your site um, so I think there are costs with with a um, uh, with performance um, and 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 sustainability and certainly things that need to be looked at in terms of, of the the security of your website. Are there things that are you're taking out of your code um, that that were there for uh, for security reasons? Um, often there are uh, pieces of of, uh, of semantic information inside of, of a web page that are there for accessibility reasons. Um, and so if you're removing those elements, are those things that that are going to um, make your website less semantic for for people. Um, is it something that that uh, you know in terms of if you're uh, yeah how do you how do you go off and, and, and weigh the the usability issues with with the the performance issues um, and also is is the is the website actually being effective in terms of delivering its needs and and uh, again there've been a lot of interesting talks about how how users are um, you really need to go off and, and and understand the whole the whole user and what they're coming to your website for um, in, determines, in terms of determining whether or not you're able to better serve their needs and serve the, um, the needs of, of the, the site owners in terms of not just having traffic, but having, having traffic um, that is, is, is meeting the end, end purpose of the website. Um, so, uh, not that any of these items can't be overcome, um, but it's just things to consider when, when, when looking at uh, performance and, and uh, sustainability of your site. Um, I, I do like the idea of uh, benefit corporations in, in measuring what matters, and um, so so trying to go off and, and uh, uh, look at the supply chain of your uh, of your organization and what are the elements that that uh, in, in your website that you can you can have control and and and, and direction over. Um, so is it is it something that um, you know where where does your where are you sourcing your your software from? What is the the uh, the how environment environmentally friendly and sustainable is the business that you're using for your hosting. Um, there's a lot of, of um, issues that you can you can look at to to evaluate this. Um, I think using open standards and open data is is also quite useful if you have benchmarks that you can refer to over time and and be able to um, at least share that internally. But but ideally, if you're able to to look at at sharing software back to the community, if you can go off and, and provide some um, some speed tests on your site on on your hosting environment and be able to share that information back, um, I think it'll help others be able to uh, to figure out what they're benchmarking their own their own sites against and uh, can help to to further everyone's goals if we're able to to look at at uh, the the uh, the best practices that that individual um, organizations have and sort of compare that with with a um, a broader uh, a broader community of of, uh, of people um, just just making sure that 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 the 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 content structure is uh, transparent and consistent is also quite important um, and making sure that you can compare your organization with with others over time. Um, so, um, you know, obviously, the more people who are working on a piece of, of software, the more people are, are, are addressing it. 
we can all benefit from from greater collaboration. Um, I, I really like the the approach of, of to, uh, a shared first approach to to uh, um, to technology and, and to to look at at ways to to make the um, the t the technology um, more. Uh, more sustainable and, and to try and, and find ways to um, to find other like-minded organizations who can build off each other's efforts in order to uh, find something that's that's able to um, meet the the uh, a broader organizational uh, or or community need um, and and sometimes this this does require um, a lot of organizational change there's 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 a lot of organizations um, who are, are really quite opposed to to sharing and and uh, there's there's a um, people who believe that if you if you give information back to an open source community that on one hand or another you're you're liable for that or that they just you know that there's the uh, that it's not worth it worth it's not a worthwhile investment to go off into you know, to cri contribute back to an open source community because um, it, people don't believe that it necessarily is going to benefit them when when they need it, um, but it, it's it's like any commons, any any sort of uh, global commons that if you if you're if you're just taking from it um, over over time that 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 resource we de depleted. Um, I have uh, um, there's a there's a concept that's that's uh, free as in in beer or free as in speech when people are talking about free software, um, but I like the approach of describing it as as free as in kittens and that there's a um, you can you can get a free kitten, um, but you have to nurture it and uh, support it and train it if you want it to go off and serve your needs over the long term. If you want to have a feral cat living in your house destroying your couch, couch then 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 that's uh, you know that's something that that is 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 your choice. But if you're able to go off and to uh, nurture the animal and have a, a loving relationship with it, then then you're able to to have a um, a better long-term relationship with with that, um, and and there are yeah similarities between um, open source software projects and uh, and and uh, and you know free kittens. Um, so wanted to to bring that out there and, and encourage people to go off and to um, to share. Um, it's also a great way to go off and to interact with with professionals. There's there's so many people who are. Um, are care passionately about so many issues. We've seen so many great speakers and, and, and people here present talking about these these issues in the in the Slack chat and other places. And um, having that that space where where um, where you, you're able to go off and interact and bounce ideas off of other professionals and learn from their experience. And because if you're working with an open source community, often there are people who are are already familiar with with sharing information and and uh, have information that they can pass along that will help you and your organization um, and and help you sort of move move the uh, uh, move move this this uh, this target along to a to more sustainable uh, space. Um, there's there's a uh, I think we, that that um, a lot of people may have heard of the the heartbeat heart bleed bug that uh, that hit the internet. This was I think it was two years ago. Um, one of the problems with that was that there was a, a failure in, in funding for uh, a uh, an open source package called SSL, and this was it was a, a, a security package that was was uh, really critical for most of the internet, and um, it was being maintained by sort of one person part time. It was like really badly maintained, and now there's a a large foundation set up uh, that the Linux Foundation is, is managing um, that is, is really investing into this and other core security um, infrastructure. And, and I think this needs to happen for sustainability as well. There's an opportunity to, to look at what do we need to have that, that, what kind of sustainability infrastructure do we need on the internet in order to be able to um, push this forward. Is there a way that we can support uh, better browser best practices? Um, can we can we leverage uh, the the uh, the people at Mozilla or at Google Chrome or um, I within the Apple universe to try and, and make sure that their uh, their browsers are really allowing allowing us to to highlight and favor those those organizations that that have been considering sustainability and are looking at, at reducing their their webs their their um, um, their foot Print, both on the the, uh, the 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 client side as well as on the the um, um, the organization or website side. Um, I think there's work to be done around network efficient, efficiency, trying to make sure that there's there's new compression algorithms in order to to more quickly pass information back and forth and greater opportunities to go off and to uh, 
um, to store information, uh, whether it's in, in CDNs or in within your ISP, so that the, the, the data doesn't necessarily have to go from um, from your website on server X to the other side of the world. Um, and, and how do we distribute that as, as effectively as possible? Um, I also like to say, say that as much as I like the idea of caching information and storing information, the internet's really great at that, but we also need to be able to forget about them, and, and that forgettability is also, I think, quite important, and that whether that's just removing data that's not useful and trying to clean up and to remove information from the web that no longer serves a purpose, um, and getting better at supporting organizations that are, are cleaning up their old, uh, their old web architecture and, and getting rid of, you know, parsing down the content that isn't relevant to, to anyone anymore, but still has a load and still has costs associated with it. Um, I'd love to have it be easier to go off and to do, uh, to have better reporting of, of what it actually takes to load a web page and to, to you know, if there, there's information that could potentially be passed back and forth with the TCIP packets to, to gather information about the CPU cycles that were involved in, in passing along that piece of information. Um, these are things which, which could be possible and, and uh, if, if there were some some people investing in it and looking towards the, the long-term infrastructure development, it could be really quite beneficial. Um, I do think reminding people that that uh, that less is more is, is really quite important. You know, the quicker we can get people turning off the computers and getting engaged with, with each other directly and engaging with the world directly as opposed to being mediated by a screen, it'll really help. Um, there's so much that we can gain by by learning how to cache and and organize and and reuse information, um, and and having that be be as efficient as, as possible, um, and and uh, even using APIs and other systems in order to be able to to share that information beyond uh, beyond our own websites so that we're not having to um, that the web isn't being generated and information isn't being passed in the same sort of static way that it used to. Um, I also want to thank everyone for, for mentioning e-waste and, and the garbage that's being used in, in generating and creating this infrastructure because it's something that, that is far too easily forgotten um, when we're using this as, as a consumer. Um, finally, looking at, at uh, uh, consumers and educating consumers about these issues. Um, it's been right, really quite interesting to go off and look at the, the eco-card dashboards and, and the influence that that has had on, on consumer behavior. Um, there's been, um, there's ways that we can use behavioral economics to go off and, and to, to affect people's behavior. And um, some industries are getting a lot smarter in how to, to address that. And I think that the web, in, web industry can, um, can get better at that and, and uh, at presenting information to people in, in, a, in a simple, understandable fa fashion that does actually affect their, their, uh, their end behavior. Um, also, um, reminders to the, the device manufacturers, making it easier for them to go off and to, uh, to demonstrate where their, their devices are not just ENERGY STAR compliant, but are, are perhaps above ENERGY, energy STAR compliant and are, are uh, looking at, at ways that they can um, take power consumption more seriously. Um, and also for the user, simplifying the accounting so you can make sure that, that it's, it's easier to go off and to know whether website A or website B is a more uh, environmentally friendly uh, design. Um, so things need to, to scale more quickly and, and open source is a good way to go off and take an eco solution and, and bring that up really to a global scale um, without necessarily people even knowing or caring about it being uh, set up as a more environmentally friendly option. Um, I think that the, the, the structure of, of having, um, you know, open source has broad impacts on the technology stacks and, and, and that we can start thinking about systems thinking to, to try and, and make changes um, across across a, a vast ecosystem of technology. Um, but we need to be looking at, at that the, as we're making our decisions and looking at, at implementing these, these, uh, these tools. We need to have evidence to go off and to make those decisions. We need to be um, trying to go off and, and not just use what sounds like it is the right decision, but really to invest the time and energy in, into having um, evidence to, to determine that these, uh, these changes are, uh, are actually helping us move things forward. Um, this ultimately, ultimately does require a, a culture change, and I, I think that we're we're in a, a good position to to do that and to start that. There's a, there's enough momentum behind this to 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 make some good ground on it, but but we need to to keep building on the momentum of this conference and and keep pushing forward for for more sustainable web uh, experiences. Um, so. Yeah, um, open source, open culture. We need to build the movement. We need to we need to send less and send it send it faster. We need to calibrate 
and collaborate and invest to see that we're um, we're having a a, a, a more uh, performant and and more uh, sustainable future. Um, and we also need to adjust user expectations to see that the um, users are are not uh, expecting a, a uh, uh, yeah that they're expecting a more environmentally sustainable product as opposed to something that is just filled with bling. Um, and uh, just to end off with an Einstein quote, we can't solve problems. Uh, we can't solve problems by using the same kind of thinking that, that uh, we used when we created them. And uh, this is, is uh, we definitely need to, to think differently about the web moving forward. And, and uh, we've created a very large uh, um, climate problem because of, of the the data centers that we're we're continuing to build quickly uh, around the globe. And need to to think differently about how um, how we go off and proceed with that. Um, so um, thank you all very much. And if you have any questions, there's my Twitter handle and website. And uh, appreciate uh, all the, the presentations that, that have gone into this day.